You're watching Notepad. I'm your host, Ibrahim Sani. At a time when bookstores are closing all around the country and around the world, one company continues to persist. In fact, they continue to thrive. I'm talking about Book Access, a company that has a lot of brands along with it, including Big Bag Wolf. Uh, joining me are the founders of the company, uh, Andrew Yap, as well as Jacqueline Ng. They're both uh, managing director as well as executive director, uh, respectively, and they're both founders of Book Access. Um, Andrew and Jacqueline, thank you very much for joining me today. The story of how I wanted to interview you was actually quite interesting. I was actually um, doing a shot um, at uh, Ipoh uh, mm. along with my crew. Um, and uh, my wife tagged along for that particular assignment because it was more like a fun day out in okay. Ipoh. Um, and uh, out of sheer luck, I walked into one of your newly minted uh, sh shops. Yeah. Um, and it was beautifully refurbished. It was actually... I think it was a former bank, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah, former Asia Bank. I think, and it, it was a bank vault. It was yeah. a bank vault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of uh, safe rooms yeah. down downstairs. It, it, it was abandoned for thirty years. So when we went down there, can you imagine abandoned for thirty years, leaking water everywhere, things. Yeah, and yeah. One thing that uh, was uh, of point was that your books uh, were extremely cheap. I'm talking about seventeen, eighteen ringgit. On average, there mm -hmm. are other books yeah. that are a little bit more expensive, but generally speaking, we're talking about 17 ringgit, 18 ringgit yeah. uh, price tags. When I tweeted a, sh a shop um, closing down at a mall near my house, mm -hmm. um, that uh, tweet actually garnered uh, a lot of uh, responses. People are saying that um, you know it's about time these uh, expensive bookstores shut down. Just go to Book Access. At that okay. point in time, that was my familiarity of Book Access. Like, oh, Book Access here, Book Access okay. there. I didn't understand what it meant as a consumer until I walked into that shop in Ipoh. So I, uh, I tracked down you guys. I actually responded to one of your emails, um, info at something, and <laughs> okay. here you are. So thank you very much for joining me. No, no, we have to thank you for reaching out to us. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the main reasons why you haven't heard about Book Access is because you know uh, we, we, we just don't have the... Um, uh, the ability to, to reach out and we need all the help that we can get. We can't do this alone. You know? Right. Yeah. Let, let's start with the first business idea here. Why is it that at, th at a time when everybody is closing, you guys are expanding and continue to thrive? What's the secret sauce here? I think there are, there are a lot of different components uh, that, that, that uh, makes it happen. Number one, like I mentioned, we can't do it alone. So, you know, um, Having uh, developers, you know, uh, coming together with us, you know, to, to be able to to uh, create a store that uh, you know that becomes a facility of the mall, yeah, you know, and so it's, it's more like a joint venture uh, with them. Even for even for Kong Hing, you know, in Ipoh where you went to, it actually belongs to to you know, the Circle Ping Group, you know, and so you know they wanted a bookstore there, and when they call us, they're saying that hey, we need a bookstore. We, we, we need people who, who understand books first. Because if you don't understand books, you will not want to, to, to have a bookstore in the first place, you know. But aren't you guys afraid yeah. of um, e-books? Isn't the rise of Kindle and Amazon and PDF for that matter, wouldn't that be a threat at least for your line of work? I think um, when we started Book Access 12 years ago, uh, that was the time where people are talking about the threat of e-books. You know, and along the way, it get more and more apparent. Um, I but most people do like physical books, and they prefer physical book if they have a choice. Uh, and book access when it started has a very simple mission: is to promote readership, is to promote English literacy in Malaysia. And when ninety eight percent of Malaysians are not reading, we are not going after the two percent that are reading. We are actually literally going after the ninety eight percent that are not. So how to even attract a non-reader to step into a bookstore and to physically touch a book and be interested and fell in love with a book? That is actually our main mission. The, the story of you uh, saying that you want to improve uh, English literacy is important, but I also noticed there's a lot of vernacular books as well when I visited the Ipo store. Um, fiction, uh, Muslim Malaysia, yeah. other languages. It's not just English, is it? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we basically um, try to, to cater to as wide range as possible to be a complete uh, bookstore, you know, to, to, to entice everyone to come in, you know, something for everyone, basically. Uh, Jacqueline, you touched on a very important point. Uh, given the choice, we would go for paper books uh, instead of e-books. Yes, uh, I, would, I would constitute as part of that consumer yeah. group as well, because 
the only thing stopping me from buying is it's not because I don't have 110 ringgit to buy one particular yeah. book. It's whether or not that book is worth 110 exactly. ringgit yes. for me. Um, and when I walk around at some of the bookstores in KLCC or you know and, and anywhere else, and I'm 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 going through the book. It's it's a nice to have, but not necessarily Correct. something yes. that I want to buy, yes. unless. It's one of those thrillers yes, like uh, yeah. uh, uh, Game of Thrones, for instance. Yeah. That okay, I you know I, I definitely yeah, will buy it yeah. no matter what the cost is. So because of that, I make that conscious choice to go through my Kindle option and look at that book. Okay, it's it's available yeah. online uh, as an ebook for 20, 20 30 ringgit, yeah. whatever, or um, as an audio book for much less yeah. than that. And I go switch for that option Correct. instead of buying that physical book. Which begs the question: How do you keep your prices so low? I think let's let's uh, rewind a little bit. You know, um, back to what you just said. We are uh, book access. You know, and big value. And all. We we are not here to uh, destroy the industry. We are here to complement the industry. You know, and uh, when books are affordable, people will give the author uh, or the book a chance. And if you you buy it uh, at a very affordable price, you find the book is very good. You know, you go to a mainstream bookstore and buy the whole series. I mean. That is the, the, the thought process of a, a reader, you know. Yeah. Why is it called book access? Um, two reasons. Uh, we give uh, 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 we are in the access book industry, meaning you know overprinted books, uh, you know uh, returns and all, but they're all new, and uh, so we give access. Uh, uh, we are in access. So we sell um, access books, yeah. and we give access to people to read. Yeah. So you, yeah. you I, I believe you know that you have a lot of friends around you who like certain authors, they will always recommend because they're so excited about a certain book they just read. Yeah. And that is when you think whether it's worth paying 110, trying that out because that may not be someone that you you really familiar, uh, yeah, familiar or have any affinity uh, towards. Yeah, exactly. But at Book Access, that allows you to try. So a lot of customers came to the store, they able to allow them to try a new genre, totally different genre, or a totally new author that they heard so much about. And then they start to get to know them, and it could be something that really fell in love to too. Yeah. It's not just yeah. about the books and the, the, the low prices that you uh, give out, right, or you sell. It's it's about the location as well. Some of the locations uh, that you are actually uh, 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 operating out of, like actually quite spectacular. I've seen some pictures uh, even prior to this interview, as well as uh, in preparation for this mm -hmm. interview, I was looking at some of the pictures. It's actually quite magnificent. Yeah. It, it, so you're, you're not just selling cheap books. Mm -hmm. I suspect you're also selling the experience as well. Yes, correct. Because we need to sell the experience to get the readers to come. What, what and book the non-readers yeah, non actually, actually, she's right. And the non-readers. Our main goal is to build a new generation of readers who has been, you know, uh, who have leapfrogged to straight to digital media. I mean, most developing countries, that's what happened. The kids never grew up with books, straight away on digital. And the other one is to bring back a lost generation of readers that is people around our age you know we know the joy uh, we we have because of uh, of our busy schedules a lot of of uh, 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 people have um, had didn't have time to read and they've forgotten the joy you know and so having a a, a, a bookstore uh, with affordable books you know they go in there they buy books for the kids they pick out a book for themselves and then they rediscover the joy of reading again so that is also uh, Part of our mission. The yeah. story of uh, my kids and I and my, uh, my wife as well, we were at the bookstore uh, at Ipo and uh, we were going through the books, my wife and I, mm -hmm. and my kids started exploring the store itself. Mm -hmm. um, I suspect my youngest actually crossed the phobia, she's five years old, okay. she just yeah. ran yeah. up. Because it's, like it's like a strong room after a it strong is. room. Yes, right? yeah, correct, yeah. And you know she's like crying. She's like oh, I don't want to go downstairs. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to figure out why. Then we went downstairs. Of course we oh, were okay. thrilled. Like okay, this there's this safe vault here, like a, like a jail system yes, there yes, as yes. well as the bars and all that. Did my you see the Yasmin uh, Ahmad? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and and my but my two other kids, the twelve year old, the seven year old, they're they're excited, yeah. all right. And and they 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 said I take the money out of my allowance. I want to buy okay. three or four oh, books wow. of themselves. Oh, and, oh, and, yeah. and, and, and of I'll, course we said yeah, sure, whatever, right? I mean. If there's one thing that I don't mind splurging my kids, it's actually yeah. books. But it's also important to note that uh, it's, it's, it's sad that the digital generation that you speak of mm. have leapfrogged from uh, 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 the skip the paper yes. book uh, uh, segment. I was fortunate enough, my, my sisters are actually far older than I am, okay. I'm the youngest. 
Um, and there's a lot of hand-me-downs, at least for the yes. children's mm. books. There's a lot of hand-me-downs. And I was uh, you know, giving my children the chance to read the books that their cousins, elder cousins, yeah. okay. were reading. H how often do we get this kind of scenario? It's exactly. extremely rare. Very rare, yes. very rare. Yeah. And, and we don't go out to buy a child's or children's book for like, 50, 60 ringgit, yes, sometimes exactly. 70 ringgit. Mm -hmm. Especially a, a picture flat, yeah. right, with like yeah. 32 pages. Imagine they don't like it, they just toss <laughs> it. It's like, yeah. you know how you feel though, you spend 50 ringgit on, on, on a yeah, book and they're, right? they're not so, interested in it. Yeah. Okay, uh, other than a book access, uh, there's also events. Uh, yeah. Big yeah. Bad Wolf, as we spoke of. Um, and uh, again, uh, the viewers of this show were talking okay. about Big Bad Wolf mm -hmm. as an event. However, there's some criticism as well. For instance, uh, the sales uh, that currently happening at Big Bad Wolf recently mm -hmm. wasn't like yesteryears where okay. it was extremely dirt cheap. Of course, I understand there would be some uh, market concentration okay. there, but let's talk about the business of Big Bad okay, Wolf. Sure. What is it about? What is it targeting? So, so, of, so back to uh, why we started Book Access. So the mission remained the same, and being a one 500 square feet bookstore from the beginning, uh, having that big a mission, I mean, you know that's a very limited we could do, right, to have any social impact. That is why we started the event, because event you don't go alone, you normally drag someone with you, <laughs> and you normally bring the whole compound there if you could, and uh, that is why we never ever charge admission fee till today, right, is to welcome anybody to come. Um, what we have weakness ourselves is the customers come in, um, they came in with their grandparents, they came in with their young babies, they allow a child to have their own trolley because that's the time that you, prices is out of the window. You just tell the child, just pick whatever you want. That joy of being so rich, which most of us will not have that privilege. I, I think that's the priceless thing. And with uh, two, three million books now at Bibel OKL, you can find anything under the sun. Yeah. Right, versus where we started uh, Big Bad Wolf 10 years ago, we had 120,000 books. Right, versus now, I think we are clocking 3.5 million books. Um, the range, the quality of books that we are able to secure. Uh, we have premium books as well that are selling like 800 ringgit outside, but we are selling at 150 ringgit at the sale. It really, really extends the range and the crowd that would appreciate them as well. Uh, that's it from me uh, for this particular episode. Until next time, thanks for watching.